Joining me right now, Democratic Congressman Denny Hack of Washington, a member of the House Intelligence Committee, one of the committees investigating the very question of collusion and Russian meddling in the 2016 election. Congressman, thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Kate. Good morning to you. So, good morning to you. You heard what the president said right there. That was him just this morning. I mean, part of your job is looking into this question of collusion. What do you say to the president? Uh, I'd sure like to know which Democrat he was referring to when he said even Democrats are acknowledging this, because I'm a Democrat, and here's my take, Kate. Collusion is hiding in plain sight. That's already been determined. Fact, period. The, uh, the Trump Tower meeting in June of last year, the email exchanges between Donald Trump Jr. and WikiLeaks, these are all proof positive evidence that the, that the Trump campaign did, in fact, engage in collusion uh, with Russians. Well, Congressman, if, you, if it's proof positive in fact, and collusion was a huge question, then why is there even anything left to investigate, and why aren't people moving on, why aren't people making moves on this administration? Well, the fact of the matter is that collusion per se is not a violation of federal law. Uh, you have to get into conspiracy and coordination in order to be able to assert a violation of federal law. And it says, and it says what, that I have not heard a Republican repeat what you said? Pardon me? And it says what, that I haven't heard a Republican say there's proof positive evidence of collusion who's on your committee? Well, that's proof positive that there's a lot of foot dragging going on, Kate. Uh, <laughs> the fact of the matter is uh, that we are, what, 11 months into this and the president's objective grasp of reality has been called into question at every turn. I thought, Kate, the most interesting press revelation of the week uh, was the story about how shortly after the intelligence community's assessment that the Russians interfered, there was a discussion among the Trump people, and they all encouraged, including the president's son-in-law, to acknowledge the reality that the Russians interfered in our elections. And basically, he alone resisted that. He kind of gave a nod and a wink toward it, then later regretted it and backpedaled it all the way. I think he's completely alone among all people in acknowledging that the Russians interfered. Well, there, that is uh, what is true is you, in, in, in saying that he has never placed a phone call to Russia, he definitely still, to, even today, is not acknowledging um, that Russia meddled in the, in the 2016 election, despite the fact the CAA director on down has said it. Also, what he said this morning was doubling down in his attack, though, that the FBI is, in, in whatever terminology he uses by day, what, depending on the day, a mess, that it needs to be rebuilt. Um, there were issues here. Mueller had to throw someone off of his team when anti-Trump text messages were found on his cell phone. The deputy attorney general had to get rid of one of, demote one of his assistants because of things that went on. Do you think that the FBI needs to be re rebuilt? Do you think there are issues there? I think the fact that Bob Mueller removed somebody uh, for those text messages is, in fact, proof that Bob Mueller is committed to undertaking this investigation with the utmost of integrity. And, Kate, while you're mentioning Director Mueller, I just want to point out the deep, deep, deep contrast between the kinds of speeches that Bob Mueller gave out at the FBI Academy when he was director and that given by the president today. When Bob Mueller was out there, he talked about the need to engage in their work and undertake their work with integrity and always, always, always be committed to the truth, as opposed to engaging in the kind of fantasy ad hominem attacks that the president engaged in this morning. There's an incredible contrast between the record, the public service record of Bob Mueller, dating back to when he was a decorated Marine serving in Vietnam, and that of Donald J. Trump. Well, let me ask you something else the president said today. He was asked about pardoning Michael Flynn, and his answer was, um, his answer was, I don't want to talk about pardons with Michael Flynn yet. Is that reassuring to you? Yeah. If President Trump pardons Michael Flynn or any of the other people involved in this, I confidently predict it will be the beginning of the unraveling of his presidency. Just as when President Nixon, I, yeah, you just heard me do it. Just as when President Nixon uh, engaged in what we now know as the Saturday Night Massacre 40 some years ago. Uh, but the other thing I, I think it's important to remind everybody, Kate, is it won't matter. The fact is that the president can pardon these people for, for federal violations of federal crimes, but he cannot pardon them from violations of state crimes. And one of the most interesting passages in the plea bargain deal that General Flynn entered into was a binding agreement that he also cooperate with state and local authorities as appropriate. So if he thinks he's going to give them a get out of jail 
card, uh, get out of jail for free card. He's just flat wrong. Once again, this president who seems, frankly, on so many occasions not to embrace the basic and fundamental American precept of the rule of law, he just doesn't get it. I've got so many other questions I do want to get to. I want to ask you about what Adam Schiff told Wolf Blitzer yesterday. He said that when it comes to, he's a top Democrat, of course, in your committee. He said, I think they view shutting us down as a prerequisite to shutting Bob Mueller down, and we see very disturbing signs that's what they intend to do. Do you agree with that? Uh, I think that the Republicans have picked up the pace of trying to get to the end of the investigation uh, at, at a rate or at a velocity which is completely out of, out of sync with what is necessary to do this job. I think they're more interested in getting it over with than getting it right at this stage, and I, think, and I think that they are completely misunderstanding what the implication of that is, both with respect to the substance, substantive work product that we hope to achieve, as well as what the American public's reaction to it will be. Congressman Denny Heck, thank you so much for your time. Much more to discuss in the future. Thank you.